A U.S. soldier visits the town where he got a Christmas card from. However, things take an unexpected turn when he falls in love with a girl that's already taken. In the opening scene, we're taken in the beautiful Nevada city where we see Faith writing a letter to a soldier and her house. In the letter, she wishes him well and expresses gratitude for everything she has, as well as her family. Although her town is small, she has decided not to leave because she wants to continue the family business. There are no department stores and malls in her town, but her church does organize operational Christmas cards for U.S. troops overseas. Finishing the letter, she invites the sergeant to visit them one day, so they can show their gratitude for his service. After putting down the zip code, she closes the letter, ready to be delivered. The letter gets delivered in Afghanistan to Sergeant Cody. Even though Cody doesn't want a card, he reads what Faith has written to him and it warms his heart. He smiles to himself as he sees the church she had invited him to, hoping that he'll be home for next Christmas. Another soldier named Jones walks into his room, so Sergeant Cody straightens up. Jonesy hands him a cookie his fiancé Lee had sent from home and Cody thanks him. Pulling out a picture of his fiancé, he shows her to Cody, who thinks that he's a lucky man. Unfortunately, Jones's hopes and dreams are about to be put to an end as a bomb hits their team while on duty. As the bomb strikes, all the soldiers run off to hide. But Jones comes back for a package that eventually costs his life. Mr. Sun Cullen delivers the terrible news to Sergeant Cody, knowing that he's lost a dear friend, decides to send him back home. There's also a widow who needs to be informed about her husband's passing, so Mr. Sun Cullen sends Cody on that mission. And surely, we see Cody riding his motorcycle across the country until he finally arrives in Nevada City. Coming up to Lee's house, he knocks on the door and soon sees a hopeful Lee. She recognizes him right away, so she pulls him in a hug. Handing her Jones's dog tags, he assures her that Jones loved her dearly. Lee's eyes fill with tears as she embraces Jones in a hug again, trying to bear the pain. Continuing into the city, Cody stops by a diner to get some food. Walking in, he sits at the bar and orders the chicken salad club sandwiches, with extra crispy curly fries and hot chocolate. As his order is getting ready, he heads to the bathroom. Faith walks into the diner, and given that her order is exactly the same, she helps herself out with some fries. Shortly, the waitress comes with her order packed, but so does Cody. Faith's eyes widen as she realizes what she has done, so she offers to share some of her fries. Looking at her mesmerized, he assures her that it's fine. Her father calls for her, so she wishes him Merry Christmas before rushing out. After the meal, Cody heads to the inn to find some rooms, but the receptionist tells him that there are rooms available only for the night. Cody agrees to stay. The receptionist Selma curiously asks whether he's there for the holidays, so Cody informs her that he's just passing by. Mentioning the church service in the morning, he asks for some directions and Slemma's eyes light up. She tells him that the church is at the top of the hill, and even invites him to sit next to her. In the evening, Cody visits the church Selma had described to him, and judging by the picture Faith had sent him, he realizes that it's the same. In the morning, he dries up his motorcycle and shortly arrives at the service. Walking in, he is greeted by Faith's father, who's unaware of the letter Faith has sent him. Given his surname, Cody recognizes him and even mentions that it's an honor to be meeting him. Pretty soon, all of them sit in their seats as the service begins. The preacher gives a meaningful speech from the Bible, calling all strangers to present themselves so they feel welcomed. Cody stands up and everyone greets him, even Faith, who is surprised to see him again. After the service ends with a gospel song, Faith's father, Mr. Luke, and Cody get into a conversation. Cody tells him that he's just passing by and Luke reveals that he served in the army as well. Seeing his daughter, he pulls Cody to her so they can meet. To his surprise, they reveal that they've already met and have some things in common. After the ceremony, Luke wishes Cody well before letting him go on his journey. Cody leaves the building and right as he's about to get on his motorcycle, Luke yells for him to wait up. Crossing the street, Luke doesn't notice the car that's coming full speed at him, but luckily, Cody does. Jumping in front of the car, he pushes Luke back to where he came from, and luckily he doesn't get him. Luke's taken to the hospital and it takes a while before they let him out. Once he sees Cody there, he begins thanking him by calling him his hero. To pay him back, the family invites him to dinner, and even stays at their house. Even though Cody tries to deny it, they convince him to come visit. Luke follows on his motorcycle as they drive back to the house. Getting in, he can't help but enjoy the smell of freshly baked goods. Faith reveals that her mother bakes all day during the holiday season, which is why the house smells so good. On the way to his room, she shows him some great photos of Luke's buddies from the army. Not only were they good friends in the army but Faith loves how they've remained good friends throughout. Finally, they get to his room when Cody decides to tell her about the letter she sent him. However, as he's about to show it to her, she gets called over to help in the kitchen. After some time, Cody joins the family in the living room to meet Faith's cousins. Rosie asks him to bring a couple of chairs from the garage and Luke joins to show him where they are. In the garage, a huge wooden sled sits in the middle, Luke's craftwork. They come across a beautiful picture of scenery on the wall, so Cody asks where it is from. Luke tells him that it's a memorial site for soldiers lost in Vietnam. 
Cody gets saddened as he reveals that his father passed in the Vietnam War, and just a couple of years after his mother passed. Seeing that he doesn't have a family to spend Christmas with, Luke offers him a job. Cody accepts it but asks for no salary. Given that he said yes, Luke takes off his cast, revealing that his hand is fine. He thanks Cody for being there and assumes that meeting him must have been Faith. However, Cody decides to come clean and tell him about the letter Faith had sent him. Luke is more than pleasantly surprised, but Cody suggests they keep it a secret for the time being. Back in the house, funny Uncle Richard arrives the same as every year, when the work and food are done. Luke introduces Cody to Richard, suppressing him with news that Cody is his new partner at work. After some family bickering, they all sit around the table and say a prayer before feasting on the delicious food. With their stomachs full, everyone gets out to play some football in the front yard. Luke stays watching and commenting, due to the accident but Faith suggests he joins as a referee. He soon joins the game that ends up with everyone on top of Luke. Later in the evening, Cody gets up to get a drink when he sees Faith writing letters in the kitchen. Pouring himself a cup of hot chocolate, he asks Faith about the letter, acting as surprised as he can so she doesn't find out. Faith tells him all about the letter she had already sent to the troops and assumes that they don't mean a lot to them. Cody assures her that it means a lot to tell the story of his father's last letter before passing away in Vietnam. Also, he lets her know that he had received a letter from someone who had kept him going, referring to her. The following morning, Luke and Cody drive up to the working station where the family makes everything out of wood. They take a tour of the workshop and even visit Richard's playroom. Next, they head into the office to see where Faith and Rosie are stationed. As they're having a conversation, Richard walks in frantically. He tells Luke that there's been a mix-up in the delivery, so Luke asks Faith to continue the tour and show him his magical place. Faith takes him further into the mill, showing him how wood is cut and explaining the proportions. However, she doesn't wait long before taking him to the magical place. She takes him to the place where Luke had proposed to Rosie, surrounded by water and nature. A beautiful site where Rosie had prayed every day for Luke to come back alive and well from Vietnam. By some miracle, Luke had returned and their wedding had been at the lake. Faith had brought them back together which is why they named their daughter Faith. It makes Cody want to be like them as he continues listening to the story, hoping that one day he'll have the same love as they have. When they come back, Luke tells Richard to show him how to do some of the work. As they get out of the office, a luxury black car pulls up and parks in front of the office. Richard's face drops as he realizes who the guy is. He tells Cody all about Paul, letting him in on his and Faith's very long-distance relationship. Without seeing them, Paul goes up to the office and surprises Faith. She is happy to see him but the same couldn't be said about Luke. Regardless, they invite him for dinner in the evening to taste the wine he had brought back, and Luke even lets her get out of work early so she can spend some time with him. Cody gets the gist of the work, having Richard by his side. However, he asks to use his workshop as he plans to make something of his own. While everyone seems to be accepting of Cody, Paul is skeptical. He reminds Faith that there are a lot of freaks in the army, but she brushes it off as his jealousy. Cody walks in right as they're talking about him, but he heads to the fireplace to put the wood down. Shaking Paul's hand, they finally meet but Paul keeps his guard up. Keeping the conversation short, Faith invites Luke to the wine tasting and he assures her that he'll be there. In the evening, the family sits by the fireplace as they taste the fruity wine. While everyone seems to have different opinions, there's one thing that Luke and Cody agree on. They've always preferred French fries over French wine. Cody gets to show his working skills the following morning. As he manages to finish every task, everyone is impressed by his work ethic, admiring him from afar. In the evening, on their way to the church they drive by the Christmas tree store and Luke notices that there aren't many trees left. So, he tells Cody that they'll need to cut up some trees the following morning. At the church, Cody tries to get closer to Faith by teasing her but she is too focused on wrapping the gifts to notice. However, he can't take his eyes off her as his feelings for her grow more and more each day. The men are up bright and early to get the Christmas trees going. However, Paul arrives just as they're about to leave, and he joins them on the trip. He doesn't seem to be excited about the idea and even complains to Faith about it. Regardless, they arrive in the woods and begin chopping trees almost immediately. Looking around, all Paul can see are hundreds and thousands of trees that scare him for the amount of work he has to do. Luckily for him, he gets a phone call that lasts for about two hours because as he comes back, he sees the trees already cut down and the men tired. They go back to the office and Paul is the one to complain about having back pain, making Luke dislike him even more. As Christmas gets closer and closer, the family works hard at the shelter to bring joy to everyone who can afford it. While packing the gifts for the shelter, Paul walks in with some things that he has brought to contribute to the act. Everyone thanks him for the kind gesture but shortly after, he walks in on Cody with some stuff he had planned to donate. More than ever, everyone's in awe of him which upsets Paul. He storms out and Faith runs after him. She manages to calm him down and reassure him that he's enough. It might be close to the holiday season but Cody is up early and working at the mill. After Richard explains to him the dotting technique he sends him to the office to deliver it. Walking in, Cody is greeted by the happy family. In the middle of the office, a huge bouquet of roses sits, so Faith makes sure to mention that it's from Paul. 
Cody pays no mind to it but hands her the document. She gets excited to connect the dots, claiming that it's her favorite technique. Richard comes in, telling him that there's more work that needs to be done, so off they go to the workshop. Not only that, Cody gets handed a lot of tasks that have him stay at the mill until the evening. After the work is done, he and Richard start working on their secret craft when Luke walks into the workshop. Luckily, Richard makes up a lie and Luke believes them. He invites Cody to the dance and doesn't take no for an answer. From old to young, everyone seems to have come to the dance, enjoying the music and having the time of their lives. After dancing with some lady, Cody joins Richard at the side. He can't help but comment on Paul and Faith, and Richard takes the freedom to express how much he dislikes Paul. It's absurd to him that every time Faith mentions settling down he disappears. Cody listens carefully, feeling bad for Faith. However, Richard decides to bribe a friend of his to dance with Paul. So, she steals Paul from Faith and Cody uses the chance to dance with her. Despite feeling uncomfortable at first, both of them get comfortable with each other and connect. Head to head, breathing each other's scent, they sway their bodies to the music. Everyone in the room notices them, even Luke. He tells Rosie that they're a wonderful couple and she reminds him that Faith's with Paul. He brushes it off, claiming that he's not suitable for her. He knows that Cody is in love with her and the only thing he can do is cheer them on because he knows true love when he sees one. Paul finally notices his girlfriend dancing with Cody. Upset, he approaches them and asks whether he can have his dancing partner back. Feeling uneasy, Faith runs out to get some fresh air. In the morning, Cody gathers some wood and goes to the living room to light it up when he's greeted by Faith and Luke. Trying to steer something, Luke asks where Paul is and Faith reveals that he's on a business trip. Continuing to make fun of him, Luke asks what Paul even does, and Cody chimes in as well. Faith explains to them that he is an international wine broker, but Luke adds that he's more international than he is with his daughter. Given that Paul's not here, Luke asks Cody to take Faith to the charity event so they don't waste time. However, they don't know that Paul has met up with the jeweler, requesting an expensive ring to ask Faith to be his wife. While he knows that Cody might be a problem, he assures her jewelry that once she takes the ring she's forever his. Cody agrees and as Faith goes to get ready, Luke tells him that one man's loss is another man's treasure. Faith and Cody make a good sum at the donation, feeling proud of themselves. Noticing his genuine smile, Faith tells Cody that he seems happier than when he first arrived. He explains that he wasn't grumpy but rather disciplined, coming straight from the army. Smiling, she comes up with something and asks him to wait at the store as she wanders off. In the evening, as he's helping with the trees, she approaches him and hands him a gift. Opening it up, he sees a camera and gets excited. Taking the first picture of her, it becomes one of many as they continue snapping pics throughout the night. Late in the evening, as everyone's gone, Paul drives to the store only to see Cody and Faith having the time of their lives. Upset, he gets out of the car and walks to them. Faith is excited to see him but once he asks her to go somewhere, she tells him that there's some cleaning up she needs to do. Luckily for Paul, Cody tells her to go as he's willing to clean it all. Faith and Paul go and Cody is left with his thoughts. In the morning, Faith joins Paul in the woods. She seems unsure as she tries to tell him something. Giving up, she stands up ready to leave but Cody stands up as well. They end up bumping into each other and falling to the ground, Faith on top of Cody. Looking deeply into each other's eyes, they give in to the lust and share their first kiss. While it is a sweet moment, Faith quickly realizes what she's done, so she rushes to get up and run back to the mill. In the office, with tears in her eyes, she explains to her mother how she kissed Cody. While Paul is the man she loves, she's unsure now that Cody's with them. Rosie smiles empathetically, letting her know that the only one who can answer all of her questions is herself. Richard comes in at the worst moment but as he connects the thought, he gets Cody to tell him that he and Faith have kissed. News travels fast, and Richard makes sure it does. He tells Luke who gets excited and shares the news with Rosie. She gets upset, asking him not to spread the word around. In the evening, the family gathers to make some cookies. Cody joins them shortly but the awkwardness can be felt between him and Faith. By some luck, Paul arrives right after him and asks to steal her for the evening. Knowing that Cody will get upset, Luke pulls him outside to get some wood. He assures him that he's very loved by the whole family, regardless of what he may think. Cody's eyes fill with tears as he admits that he didn't plan for any of it to happen. Soldiers needed someone to come back to, and since he had no one, Cody had found himself in a tricky situation. Regardless of what happens with Faith, Luke assures him that he'll always have them to come back to. Paul finally takes Faith to the long-awaited dinner. Walking into the restaurant, Faith is surprised to see it empty, so she asks where the customers are. The waitress reveals that it had been booked for a private party, their dinner. Faith smiles as she thanks Paul for the kind gesture. As Cody's crafting a gift for the family, Paul decides to finally ask Father to marry him. He promises to spend the rest of their lives with her, traveling all throughout Europe. Shocked, she struggles to find the words but eventually says yes. In the morning, at the office, she sees Cody and decides to tell him the news. He is evidently heartbroken but wishes her good luck before leaving. It gets her thinking as well, wondering whether she's made the right decision. In the afternoon, she meets up with Paul at the diner to catch a break. 
They discuss their marriage and Faith mentions that they've never discussed traveling the world together. Paul tries to convince her that it will be amazing, assuring her that they'll spend some time in her hometown as well. Faith isn't the only one who seems to be unsure, so is Cody. While sitting alone, Luke joins him to share the news. Cody has decided to give up and let her be happy, however, Luke tries to motivate him to win her over. Thinking that it's really over, Cody faces his loss and is ready to move on. Shaking his hand, Luke thanks him once again for saving his life. However, Luke's not ready to give up on them just yet. Later into the night, Faith tries to start her car when she realizes that the battery is dead. She calls Luke to come pick her up, and he promises to. But something else comes up in his mind. Setting up the carriage, he asks Cody to go pick her up since it is too cold for old people like them. He hesitates at first but is left with no choice as there's no one else to pick her up. After giving him Faith's favorite blanket, he lets Luke go with the hope that some things will change. Cody finally arrives and we see Faith shaking from the cold. Not expecting to see him, he assures her that it wasn't his idea. Now that they're left alone, she apologizes for kissing him and giving him the wrong idea. However, he wasn't sorry because the time he spent with her and the kiss had meant a lot to him. She thinks that he deserves to be happy and he assures her that he will. Getting on the carriage, he hands her the blanket and they go on their way. As they arrive, she decides to give him the blanket, as something that will keep him warm when he goes away. The following morning, just a day before Christmas, the family can be seen dancing in the kitchen and having the time of their lives. Cody joins him as well, but as he switches with Luke, he and Faith are left to dance together. Feeling uncomfortable, they let go and claim that they have some things they need to do. Cody asks to borrow the truck so he can finish some work. Before he goes, Rosie reminds him of the service in the evening, letting him know that he has to be there. Driving up to the spot where Faith kissed him, he drops off the gift he had crafted for the family. In the evening, the whole community gathers in the church to celebrate the day before Christmas. As people are coming in, Paul and Cody meet at the door. Feeling uneasy, Cody admits to loving Faith but promises to respect their relationship. Paul agrees, claiming that love is what kept them together, not luck. Cody feels as if he's not needed in the family, let alone around Faith, so he decides not to enter the church and simply disappears. However, if only he knew how wrong he was, as Faith continues to search for him with the little hope she has left. Through the ceremony, Paul notices that she's not happy and that she's always looking out to see who enters the room. Having had enough, he blows his candle and heads out. She runs after him and once she catches up he stops. Looking at him with so much regret, the only thing she can say is I'm sorry. He doesn't say anything, instead, he kisses her on the forehead for the last time and disappears. Before everyone gets up, Cody takes a chance to leave in peace. He puts the Christmas letter under the tree, fires up his motorcycle, and leaves without looking back. The family's concerned about him as his motorcycle is not in the driveway and his bed was made. As Richard comes in, Rosie notices the letter under the tree so she goes to grab it. Opening it up, she reads a letter from Cody thanking them for saving his life and a map to follow for their gift. Wasting no time, the family jumps in the truck and heads to the place on the map. They arrive at the lake and see a beautiful wooden bench with the carving where the magic begins. On the bench is a letter that Faith picks up to read. Cody had left the letter she sent him in the army, along with a letter of his. In his letter, he tells her that he had fallen in love with her twice, once after reading the letter, and the second time when she had stolen his fries. Confused, Faith asks whether the letter has brought him to the city, and Luke tells her that she has. Finally, she comes to her senses and wishes to find him. Luckily, Luke has an idea of where he might be. And he's right, as Faith approaches the memorial bridge for fallen soldiers in Vietnam, she sees Cody looking into the distance. Coming down the stairs, she calls out for him and hands him the same order that had brought them together at first. He asks for hot chocolate, and she tells him that he'll have to come to the city for that. Getting closer, she starts scolding him for leaving without saying goodbye but he cuts her off by kissing her passionately, marking the beginning of their long-awaited love story. 